Hi, my name's John. Welcome to another Sunday night nightcap. Tonight's nightcap, as usual, has got a decent mixture of things in, uh, machining, welding. I do a little bit of production work. I don't do much like repetition work, but I've got a few items to make. I'll show you how I do that in the lathe. Uh, each step at a time simplifies things, makes things a lot easier and a lot quicker. First thing I'm going to do is the draw for the two inch clock micrometer. One there. The name I've got is Scott Johnson. Right, Scott, all you're going to do is send me an email with your address, and I'll get this micrometer posted off to you anywhere in the world, as I say, completely free of charge. I'm going to do another draw this week. This is a different, a different, to see him draw to a different subject. What it's going to be is a draw for this plasma cut Sierra Cosworth, a left hand or right hand draw, depending on which way you want it. I'm uh, actually sure a speed up version has been cut out in the video. As usual, if you want a chance to win the Escort Cosworth, all you have to do is send me an email. That's my email up there. And all I need in your email address is a name like John Mills, not just John. Your name goes into the bucket. If it's pulled out, I'll push that off to you. Anywhere in the world, completely free of charge. That'll look nice in anybody's workshop, that. There's also a little bit of your meal come in, I want to show that. There's a close up shot of this week's prize, the Sierra Cosworth. That's just been polished up with a floppy wheel on a little angle grinder. You can paint it, you can do anything you want, but really, I think it'll look nice polished like that and just a quarter, a quarter clear like that. Like I say, it is left hand, or it could also be right hand drive. This was sent in by a lad called Vernon, 15 inch adjustable spanner, because I haven't got a big adjustable spanner in the shop hanging next to my face. I've certainly got one now, and this might stop us from being a rough bastard and using stilsons on various pipe fittings. Anyway, thanks very much for that. I'm sure you'll see that used all the time. This turned up a work this week, a lad called Mark sent it in. And what it is, it's a chuck key for the little chuck on my dividing head because I didn't have a chuck key for it. He's made this for us, very nicely made it is as well. All proper stuff, all the edges are nicely made, yes, you can tell he spent a lot of time and care making it for us. That's a nice little radius in there, they're, they're hard to do without getting chatter marks. All he hasn't done is machined a square on the end. Because obviously he doesn't know what size a chuck is. So I'll probably do that through the week. I'll do a little bit of video of machining a nice accurate square on the end of there to fit the chuck. Anyway, that's that's excellent. Thank you very much. I do enjoy using poor me tools. There's something about them. Really nice. I've got a brass pipe fitting here. It's off a steam locomotive back head. Um, it's actually a water gauge adapter. It's obviously had been a little bit awkward to remove and the Stiltons have done that damage on it so it's beyond repair that all it does make a new one. That's the only bit of brass bar I've got of a suitable size so I'll get it out of there. It would appear to be a BSP thread, I'll measure it and make sure. It's a 14 TPI thread gauge and it is indeed 14 TPI as is the smaller side. One interesting feature is this hole. That hole has started off round and now you can see it's like a, a teardrop shape or a keyway shape. That can only be with the water going through that over dear knows how many years has actually worn the brass away. It's quite incredible that. Right, so we'll mount that bit of brass and get it roughed out the side and get some threads put on it. There's quite a lot to come off there, so what I'll do, I'll put a big heavy cut on with the power feed with the layers running reasonably slow. Now it's going to be noisy because I've actually got the gearbox set up to cut the 14 TPI thread. So it's got a compound gear chain in there and the gears aren't meshing as well as one would have liked. But
Right. Thirty mil. Do it in battery to tease you for. Gonna measure twice and cut once. Okay, now we've got the four flying. Which it is. It's actually point one bigger than I need because it's the tool I'm using. But it's trying to cut the cut the thread, take the last little bit off. I've got a foam tool for this. They want an inch of 25 mil. Right, so that's the blank ready to take the threads. Check the dimensions again. We've got 30.1, 26.1, which is exactly what we need. The throw the gearbox out to dry. Keep over hand to minimum on parting tools. In fact, you keep over hand to minimum on all tools. Just a little bit, just a little bit of the shuffle room, that's all I need. Right, that's a blank ready, so tomorrow night's job is to put some threads on that. Right, this is the foam tool that we're going to use to cut the thread. You can make sure that's square to the the jobs by simply doing that I know for a fact it's dead on centre height I'm not going to put an angle feed in with this I'm just going to go straight in uh, one thing I will have to do I wouldn't be able to disengage the lead screw once I start screw cutting um, you can do it with 11 TPI 
but you can't do it with 14, I've tried, it just doesn't work. You can't pick the thread up again. Right, so we'll, everything's set up, we'll do a trail cut just to verify that it is cutting the right pitch, a nice light cut. You can see one side here just needs to grow, that's it. Right, so that won't be coming out until this part of the thread finished. So get myself. Right, that's absolutely spot on. So when the tool out, reverse the lead. Back into zero on the cross slide. Plus some cut. Yeah, forward again. Right, I hope you can see the tool there, the little shoulder, once that gets down to touching the top of the job, that's the thread done. Should be getting pretty near. It is, but not near enough. This could be done basically in two or three passes when I'm not in that much of a hurry. Uh, I'd rather get it right and not break a tool or scrap the job. So hopefully this will be the last cut. Here. It just needs point two taken off that top face. Basically, a tenth of a mill aside, which is not a great lot. Tool doesn't want to be doing that too often. Right, that's it. I'm going to do one more cut on the same setting just to clean it up. That's a nice thread. I think a spring cut it shouldn't take a bit of it. You can see they're cutting both sides now. Oh! Bastard thing! Right, that's absolutely spot on. Let me just engage the nut now. That's one. Half the thread done. Same with that half, and then drill it. 
and I want to put a square hole in there so you can drive it in with a probably a half inch square or a fifth square socket extension. That's a nice sharp thread. See how the form tool fits in. Made down to depth. Happy with that.